Hello, well today I'm looking at leather tools <laughs> and I had an email from someone actually who was asking me about tools and said look I'd like to do some leather work um, but I don't really know what tools I need or what the tools do could you do a little film just to show us I thought well yeah it's great it will show a few other people what's available and what I think are the right tools other people may have other views but that's fine so what I'll do, I'll run through the basic tools and what they do. So first of all, I'm going to show you the tools that I think are essential. A sharp knife, a skiver, a channeling tool, either an awl or a stitching chisel to make holes, an edge beveler, and then an edge slicker and obviously some sewing needles. I'll run through a bit more about what each one does and go into a little bit more detail. I think it's important to perhaps stress that the tools I may choose may be different to the tools someone else would choose. It's all down to subjective opinion. But I think probably most people would broadly agree on the sorts of tools that you want to start with. Anyway, I hope so. <laughs> but I accept what I say. Someone else may say, oh, no, actually, I'd want X or Y. And it does sort of depend partly on what sorts of projects you're doing. So in the tools I've chosen, I'm assuming you might perhaps want to make things like tool covers, um, chisel blade covers, axe covers, that sort of thing, maybe knife sheaths, and perhaps, you know, sew up leather boxes or little containers and things like that. So that's the sort of leather work I'm assuming there. Now just perhaps to run through each of the tools in a little bit more detail. Cutting wise to cut leather you could just use a standard utility knife. So if you've got something like a Stanley knife that you use to cut laminate, chances are that will work quite well on leather. The reason I chose a knife like this, it can cut curves very nicely. It's called a clicker knife and it's got a nice handle, disposable blades, so no problem of sharpening blades. And they're nice tools to hold, they're nice tools to use. I do also use these fabric cutting rotary cutters, and I find they're very good as well, particularly for straight lines, they're not so good for curves. And I mean, again, not essential, so now I'm veering into the not so essential territory, I like cutting rulers, safety ones that have the rubber underneath and the higher raised straight edge, like this one. This one, is it going to make a, it's a Linex, L-I-N-E-X ruler in Denmark, but I think they're nice for cutting. But as I say, you really just need something in the way of a fairly sharp knife and always take care when cutting because it's dangerous. <laughs> but um, Leather's fairly easy to cut. So that's knife wise. The skiver is for thinning the leather. So it's to take down the thickness of the seams and that's quite useful if say you're going around a welt of an axe or something like that. But something to thin your seams down at the edges and also to level up seams uh, we have two pieces of leather and you want to flatten them together. I like these cheap tin disposable bladed skivers. You can get blades, you just put a pack of blades, you can put a new blade in, keeps nice and sharp. They're easy to maintain, they're cheap to buy. So that's what I would go for skiver wise. You can go for things like French skiving knives, uh, which again I do use, I quite like them, but I'm just trying to keep this straightforward to help someone get going. Now I'm assuming that some of the things you want to do you want to be sinking the stitches that you're going to sew below the surface of the leather. So a grooving tool of some sort. This one is a Tandy grooving tool and it's just got a little cutter there that cuts a little groove into your leather so you can then sink the stitches down below the surface. And again, you can see this in some of my films, like the belt making films or the bag making film, and it will, you'll see these sorts of tools being used. But that's the groover. In terms of where do you buy tools from, you can actually get quite a lot from 
places like Tandy Lever. Uh, you can get them on eBay. Um, if you're just setting out, there's nothing wrong, frankly, with some of the cheap tools from China. You'll get an idea of what you like, don't like, and then as time goes on, you can buy some of the more expensive, you know, Osborne, except for nice quality tools, Blanchard, and places like that. So you'll find them on Etsy, on the internet generally, if you just look for leather tools. Stitching wise, you could just go for an awl and a stitch marking wheel. So that's one of these. So this gives you little indentations to mark the distance between each stitch. You can use it all to make the hole in the lever for your needle. If you're setting out, I'm quite an advocate of these stitching chisels. You can buy them very cheaply on the likes of eBay and you basically hit them with a hammer and it gives you a row of very nice angled holes ready for sewing. And it's good actually because if your hands aren't that strong then you've got the assistance of a hammer with these for making the holes. There's a lot of people I talk to get put off leather working because they think they've got to push this sharp point through leather and their hands aren't going to manage it. But actually if you use a stitching chisel like this you'll get nice holes and they'll be nicely lined up. You can get different numbers of points. I would go for a medium sized set. So they generally come in small stitches, medium and large. Starting out, I'd go for the medium set and you can get them either individually or you can buy them as sets of four chisels where you get one point, two point, four and six points. But if you have, you know, one would say four and then maybe a, a two point chisel that would be enough to get you going, but they're, they're good. So apart from that, needles, you do need some slightly, uh, well they're proper saddler's needles and they're very slightly rounded on the tips. So it's different to normal cloth sewing needles, but the points aren't that pointy. <laughs> so they won't sort of pierce my finger and that so they don't pierce and get tangled up in the thread as you're sewing. So they're rounded to the point. These are the fairly standard ones. I'd go for a size two as general purpose needles to get you going. So these are John James two slash zero size and you can get them in packets. Again, they're quite reasonable to buy. So that's all you're sort of sewing, getting your and thread wise you've got a choice really, um, a linen thread is a good place to start so that would be fine. When you have made your item you may want to round over the edges and it just makes it look neater so if it's a belt you can round over the edge give it a nice sort of rather than a square edge it gives you a rounded edge and you need an edge shave tool. These come in different sizes and again they're numbered I would go initially for a size 2, maybe a size 3, but that's a good general purpose sort of size. And that will just shave off the leather along the edge and give you a nice finish. Again, look at one of my belt making films, you'll see that being used quite a lot. And then you need to polish up the edges, and this is really the last tool I would recommend if you're starting. So you want an edge slicker. Now, I personally like the wooden, ordinary wooden slickers. So it's a piece of wood, it's got grooves in it and a slightly rounded body and a point here, flat fat side and you can use this for polishing the edges of your leather project. You can get round ones, so that's a round one and um, that's, that's good as well. These are very cheap and they're quite effective. So again, have a look on eBay for these and you'll find you can get yourself an edge slicker. You can get power slickers, you can get fancy ones made from different woods. Actually, I mean, I slick thousands of edges <laughs> and I quite like just a cheapo wooden slicker. So easy to please, you see. So I think that's the absolute essential tools I'd go for initially see how you get on, see if you enjoy it, and then you can buy more as you go along. 
Now, I haven't talked about making holes in the leather and you may want to get something in the way of some hole punches. And if you're setting out, I would just go for the very cheap sets. You can get these in different sizes, set of about eight hole punches, very cheap indeed, off Amazon, eBay, etc. They're not very nice quality, but they do work. If you go for the more expensive ones, you'll find that they're easier to extract from your leather. Once you've punched it through with a hammer, they're easier to extract. But these will get you going and they're cheap enough, frankly. You can get a set as money permits and interest permits. You can buy some of the higher quality Osborne type punches and they'll give you a nice hole where it's easy to extract the cutter. With this it will be more difficult as it's a bit sort of not surrounded on its edges. But it does form a hole, gets you going. I could go on. I mean there are lots more tools that you could get. I haven't talked about putting in um, rivets or press studs or things like that. But I think the idea is try a simple project like a little purse or an axe cover, something like that to get you interest and then you know see how it goes from there and there's no end to the tools that you can buy and you can spend if you want to a lot of money on tools but I think if you try a project you'll find particular interests will take you and you'll suddenly you know I mean I'm quite into actually using sewing machines for a lot of my leather works so at the moment I'm doing some tool rolls I wouldn't want to stitch those by hand but as I say, you'll try different things, but the important thing is to have a go. It's a great interest. There's such scope for doing different things. I haven't talked about carving leather, painting leather, um, putting patterns into leather. There really is wet moulding it. There's, there's no end to the interest that you can find in it. So yeah, heartily recommend you have a go, get a few little tools, and I hope you have great fun. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.